This video series is brought to you by Dunleary Ratdown Libraries, in association with Mark the Science Guy. Aerodynamics is the study of how objects move through the air. Anything that moves through the air interacts with it. Airplanes, space rockets, birds, frisbees, footballs, even this F1 car. Air can exert a force on objects, like my face. So when designing things, engineers study these forces so they can make the best and most efficient designs possible. Helping planes fly better, footballs fly more predictably, making bridges safer and racing cars faster. Aerodynamics even helps engineers land spacecraft on other planets. By studying the way air flows around objects, engineers can do some amazing things. What are you doing? Stop messing around, we've got to get ready for the Irish Paper Airplane Flying Championships. The IPAFC! Come on! Ooh, that can't be good. Without air, there'd be no aerodynamics. Air may be invisible, but it's all around us, made up of molecules of different gas. When anything is moving through the air, it's bumping into those air molecules. And air can be really powerful and exert large forces on things. Think of a hurricane or a tornado, or how it can turn the blades of a wind turbine and lift heavy airplanes into the sky. Speaking of planes, we don't have long until the championships, oh, yeah. so let's investigate the forces of aerodynamics. Okay. Planes, rockets, speedboats and cars are designed by engineers to fly better, through the air. But so are footballs, golf balls, tennis balls, and most other sports equipment and clothing. To show you how air can exert a force on an object, we're gonna use this ping pong ball and this wind tunnel generator. Mark, isn't that your hair dryer? Y yes, but we're gonna use it to simulate a ball flying through the air. <laughs> the air exerts an upward force on the ball. All those air molecules are hitting off the ball keeping it in the air, against the force of gravity, trying to pull it down. Nice, okay. Now, let's supersize it with this beach ball Ooh. and this giant leaf blower. Oh, isn't that your hair dryer, Ali? Oh, oh. <laughs> more air, more force. And check this out. The ball stays in the air due to the Bernoulli principle, named after Swiss mathematician Daniel Bernoulli. He explained that the faster moving air has lower pressure compared to slower moving air. And check this out! The fast moving air moves around the ball and creates an area of low pressure. The slower moving air in the room has higher pressure and forces the ball to stay in the low pressure column. That was pretty cool. pretty cool. So the shape of an object is very important in how the air will flow around it. Pretty cool. <laughs> Engineers spend a lot of time designing and testing the most aerodynamic shapes. They can use computers to help them and also real wind tunnels. Ooh. Wind tunnels are large tubes with air moving inside. They're used to recreate the conditions of an object in flight. Yeah, you want to be able to test your designs safely on the ground before testing them in the air. Engineers use wind tunnels to learn more about how things move through the air. So the wind tunnel moves air around an object, making it seem like the object is really flying. Wind tunnels can be used to test lots of things from aircraft, cars, spacecraft, racing bikes, tennis balls, footballs, anything engineers want to make fly through the air better and more efficiently. Wind tunnels can be large enough to test full-sized aircraft or a little bit smaller like this one. Powerful fans move air through the tube. The object to be tested is secured in the tunnel so it won't move. The air moving around the still object shows what would happen if the object was moving through the air. Smoke or dye can be placed in the air so it can be seen and analysed as it moves around the object. And then special instruments can then measure the force of the air on the object. Wind tunnels help test ideas for ways to make planes or cars better and safer. Engineers test new materials or shapes. We've chosen two different shapes for our vehicles, so let's test them in the tunnel. Right. Now let's test them on the track. So we 
we've seen how the shape of an object affects how it moves through the air. And some shapes are more aerodynamic than others. Whatever. <laughs> Wind tunnels can even help engineers design spacecraft to work in other worlds. Yeah, like Mars has a very thin atmosphere. There's not much air. So it'll be important to know what will happen when landing vehicles or drones there. Spacecraft design and parachutes are tested in wind tunnels set up to be like the Martian atmosphere. Ah, parachutes gives me a great idea to demonstrate some of the forces of flight. Ooh. Let's check them out. So to make some parachutes, you're going to need five different materials like card, tissue paper, felt, bits of plastic bag. We've also got some shiny fabric. You'll need some fine string or thread. You'll need some scissors a ruler and your skydivers nice first cut out a square from your first material measuring 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters then cut a small hole in the center of the material cut so next you're going to put cut four pieces of thread between like 15 and 30 centimeters yeah. long and you're going to attach the string to each of the four corners of your material. You can either tie a knot around each of the four corners or you can poke some holes and thread through. Gather the four ends of the string and tie them in a knot. Make sure to leave some extra string so that you can attach your skydiver. And there you have your parachutes. Mm, let's go test them. Everything on Earth has weight. This force comes from gravity pulling down on objects. Gravity makes every object fall at the same speed, no matter how heavy or light it is. But air can help slow down the speed of your fall by exerting another force on you called air resistance or drag. The shape of an object can change the amount of drag slowing it down, like with our air cars. Like the force you can feel pushing your hand backwards when you put it out a car window, when it's safe to do so. The more air that hits a surface, the more drag it makes. And that's exactly what parachutes are designed for. Let's test them. Hold the centre of the parachute canopy and drop it. Then use a stopwatch to time how long it takes to reach the floor. Gravity pulls the skydiver down and the air resistance pushes upwards on the parachute against the force of gravity, slowing it down. The small hole in the centre of the parachute allows air to pass slowly through it rather than spilling out over the edge. This helps the parachute to fall in a straight line. Drag is great for skydivers as it slows them down. And that's good, but it's not good for planes. We want planes and cars to fly faster through the air and drag slows them down. So engineers are trying to design them to minimize the force of drag. The challenge for engineers is to find creative ways to reduce drag so that airplanes can go faster and fly more efficiently. And airplanes are constantly changing shape to improve their efficiency and performance and to make them more aerodynamic. I think it's about time we got creative and designed some airplanes ourselves. All you need is a sheet of paper. Mm. You can research different designs on the internet and test them out. Mm. Let's get folding. Mm. We know how important shape is for things flying through the air. And the shape of an airplane's wings is what makes it able to fly. The movement of air over the plane's wings creates an upward force that pushes the plane up into the sky. This force is called lift. The shape of the plane's wing is what generates this lift's force. Everything that flies must have lift. It is the force that is the opposite of weight, which pulls down. Lift and another force called thrust, so it keeps the plane in the air. And thrust is the push that moves something forward. And the plane's engines give the plane the thrust, which propels it into the air. So we have our designs and we know the four forces of flight. Lift. Which makes an object move up. Weight. Which makes an object move down. Thrust. Which makes an object move forward. And drag. Which makes an object slow down. How much of these forces there is changes how an object moves through the air. So let's test our designs and see which is the most aerodynamic. But first we need a team name for okay. the championships. Okay, Mark, let's not concentrate on that too much. And we, we need, need to look cool. Practicing. We can, oh my, top gum. Oh, perfect, top gum it is. Top gum it is.
We're here at the testing zone and we've got a range of paper airplanes that we're about to test. Yeah, lots of different designs, yep. lots of different shapes. Uh, we've got our runway marked out below, so we're going to see how far each design flies and also how accurately or how much it can fly in a straight line. Yes, because the better and more aerodynamic design you have, the further and straighter your plane will fly. Ali, you're up first. Okay. Okay. The thrust force is provided by our throw. It pushes the plane forward. When a paper airplane is flying through the air, the four forces of lift, weight, thrust and drag are all acting on the plane, affecting its journey through the air. While the plane is moving forward, air is moving over and under the wings, providing a lift force pushing the plane up, against the force of gravity pulling the plane down, its weight. The air is also pushing against the plane, slowing it down. This is the drag force. We'll do much better in the championships next year. Don't let it drag yeah. you down. The championships are this year. <laughs> They're this year. I thought we just did the championships. No, we were practicing for them and choosing the best design to bring to the championships. It's not clear in the plot. At least we got one good design to bring to the championship. Yeah. Don't let it drag you down. Some paper airplanes clearly fly better than others. Try out different designs, using different paper, different sizes, and see how it affects its flight. Engineers apply the principles of aerodynamics to design of many different things. I think we need to practice a little bit more. I think so too. Okay. This video series is brought to you by Dunleary Ratdown Libraries, in association with Mark the Science Guy. Hi. 